Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lizard Trader webinar. How are you guys today? My name is uh, Chris Lassen. I uh, have prepared a uh, very nice presentation for you guys today. So I'm very excited to uh, give this webinar. I am a little bit uh, under the weather, the uh, fall weather of uh, Berlin, Germany here is uh, taking me a little bit uh, uh, off guard. So uh, I'm a little bit, uh, have a little bit sore, sore throat and, and stuffed sinuses, but um, nothing worse than uh, that I would be able to, to do this um, presentation here today. So I'm going to talk about uh, three lizard trader indicators and um, how to apply these concepts uh, in a profitable Forex uh, trading strategy here today. So for those uh, who of you who are not familiar with the Lister Trader and the Lister Trader team, uh, this is a quick introduction uh, on us. Uh, like I mentioned, we're based here in Berlin, Germany, and uh, most of you will be familiar with uh, Harry, also known as uh, Fat Tails. He's uh, very well known throughout the Ninja Trader community, both over at the Ninja Trader Support Forum and uh, at Big Mike Trading. So he's programmed some of the most downloaded indicators for the NinaTrader platform, including uh, the tools that we will present here today. As for myself, I am the co-founder and CEO of Lizard Trader. I've been a part of the NinaTrader community for uh, the last five years or so. Until recently, I ran a software company that automatically interpreted sentiment and financial news. And uh, what we did was to have a machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence uh, algorithm to uh, detect uh, market sentiment in financial news stories. So what we did was to integrate this data in um, algorithmic uh, trading models and managed futures uh, products. So uh, I have quite a bit of experience with uh, system trading and uh, creating trading strategies that run um, automated and uh, that are rule-based. Uh, so last uh, year, I uh, got an offer to sell my shares in the company, and uh, I uh, uh, soon thereafter started Lizard Trader with uh, Harry. So uh, some of you might uh, wonder what's uh, what's up with the uh, Lizard Trader name. Why, why did you guys choose Lizard Trader as uh, a name for uh, for your company and for your products? Uh, well, it's. Uh, it's funny. The funny thing about lizards, uh, most of the time, they it looks it looks like they're just uh, lying around and enjoying the sun and not really doing very much. But uh, in reality, they're uh, very patiently listening and looking and waiting for opportunities to uh, grab what's right in front of them. And they've used this uh, simple survival technique for more than 200 million years. And so, as uh, traders, uh, we think there is a lesson. To be learned here and that's um, just to to keep it very simple have a clear strategy for for how you're going to uh, to get to your your gains and uh, wait patiently for the uh, opportunities uh, to come your way and uh, as you'll see here today the uh, lizard trader concepts are fairly easy to understand and execute and uh, so what we look for are uh, specific price action setups that can be found in uh, any market pretty much uh, all the time. So for the uh, outline here today, uh, the uh, topic will be uh, how to trade with what we call uh, leading indicators. In case you are uh, not familiar with the concept of leading indicators, we'll first explain a little bit about what they are and why we think they're important. Uh, they will show us uh, objective price levels where institutional investors are likely to participate. We'll then uh, go over the uh, zero lag oscillator, which is a, a fairly new addition to uh, our product offering uh, at our website. Uh, this uh, indicator will help us with the entry timing. And uh, we will then also go over a trading strategy for the uh, Euro futures contracts, um, defining entry points with uh, low risk and high reward potential. We'll uh, then go over how to set uh, some simple rules for your trading setups and going over the conditions that you will want to see before you enter the market. I will also look at a backtest for this setup to verify that we are working with the sand concept. And then uh, we'll have a look at some trades that we uh, took this week. 
And uh, towards the end of the webinar here today, we'll also announce a, a, a special offer with a pretty amazing discount on uh, our indicator package. So uh, make sure that you stick around until the end for that. So today we have both uh, novice and advanced traders here. So my challenge will be to uh, balance the presentation and uh, keep it interesting for everyone. So if you're an advanced user, uh, bear with me if I explain some things that are obvious to you. And uh, if you're at the other end of the specter here, then stick around until the end. We'll have a Q&A session uh, to tie up uh, any loose ends that we'll uh, have during uh, the webinar. I'm not going to answer questions during the webinar today, so just type in any question uh, that you may have in the chat box, and then uh, we will uh, try to get back to uh, all of those uh, towards the end. If uh, I don't manage to answer all the questions, then uh, I will get back to you via email. So uh, either today or later today, I will answer your, your question uh, via email. So just type it into the, the chat box if there's something that you're wondering about. So before we get starting here today, I'm going to add the customary disclaimer here. It's uh, stating that uh, trading is associated with uh, considerable risks. And uh, make sure that you understand that and keep in mind that the results from the trading strategy that we're going over here today are hypothetical and not based on actual performance. So leading indicators, what are they? <clears throat> A leading indicator uh, will alert us of uh, something which is about to happen before it actually does. And uh, to be a leading indicator, we have a, a two-step test to establish uh, if it's uh, worthwhile uh, paying attention to or not. And first, we want the indicator to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, we want uh, the concept to be very well established in the trading community. So looking at the moon or uh, finding out whether it's a full moon or a, a new moon or a half moon or if the winter was cold and the summer was warm or some other holy grail indicator uh, will have limited value in uh, predicting uh, the direction of uh, the market because professionals uh, don't look at that stuff and uh, professional institutional investors are uh, the ones that make the uh, the markets and the prices move so we want to really base our decisions on uh, what they are using and uh, uh, try to align ourselves with the uh, the the next trend of uh, of the market and so the second requirement for being a leading indicator is uh, that it has to be objective and in order to be a meeting point for uh, institutional buyers and sellers, uh, we need to uh, make sure that we all look at the same price levels because only then can there be really agreement on where support and resistance is to be found and uh, what um, will happen uh, after that uh, support and resistance is encountered. And this is uh, very different for what we call lagging indicators. Uh, for example, a moving average is the lagging indicator. So a lot of traders are, are using them and um, uh, thinking that this is what technical trading is all about, but it's uh, it's really not because uh, they're all looking at, uh, at different lines. So there is no consensus uh, as to whether you should use a 200 day or 100 or 50 for uh, support and resistance. So uh, it's going to be a very different story if you use a 200-day average uh, to find support and resistant, resistance uh, versus a 100 or a, or a 50-day moving average. <clears throat> and, uh, and there are, of course, different ways of calculating these uh, averages. So um, thinking about the, the formulas themselves, so we have, for example, the exponential moving average uh, or the smooth moving average, and that will plot different lines on the chart. And not to mention the uh, the chart settings themselves. So uh, the time frames that build the bars on the chart uh, will have uh, very different price levels depending on whether you use a daily chart, an hourly or a 15 minute chart, or a tick or a range chart. Uh, that's uh, that's going to tell a different story uh, on these uh, these lagging indicators, and that's really not the case for uh, leading indicators. 
Uh, and uh, that really goes to the, the core of what uh, technical analysis is all about. It's uh, about herd mentality. And uh, it only works uh, if uh, enough traders react in a coordinated way when looking at certain uh, chart patterns or uh, support and resistance levels. So um, for lagging indicators, everyone is looking at different uh, curves, support and resistance levels and crossovers. So we can't really expect uh, market participants to be very coordinated when, uh, when using that. So for the next few minutes, I'll talk about uh, the two price benchmarks that uh, we use and that are very well established and uh, that produce the same price levels for everyone. So this is the, uh, the session pivots and the volume weighted average price indicators. And uh, the pivot calculation is, uh, is fairly easy, has a very long tradition, and uh, it's the same for everyone uh, in terms of objectivity. I think we can all agree that uh, the high and the low and the close of the previous session, uh, uh, that's going to be the same for everyone. And that's the basis for the pivot calculation. So I'll go into detail about that in uh, just a little bit. For the VWAP, it's, uh, it's a poorly kept secret that this is an institutional benchmark to measure uh, execution costs. So brokers and large traders have uh, developed sophisticated order execution algorithms to uh, achieve volume weighted average price of the day or better. And um, this is now even available at the retail level. So if you have Interactive Broker as uh, your uh, broker, then you can uh, submit orders with the VWAP execution. And uh, that really goes to show uh, how important this price action benchmark has become. Um, in other words, uh, by using these uh, two indicators, we'll know where there will be significant price action and um, uh, because when uh, the market reached these levels, everyone is really looking at the same uh, information at, this, at the same price levels and, uh, and uh, really acting in a coordinated uh, way when the, the market interacts with, the, with these levels. So the uh, volume weighted average price is uh, really the uh, uh, arithmetic mean of all contracts traded during a defined period. So uh, you can calculate this if, as long as you have price and volume data. And uh, that's the thing about Forex, which we will be talking about today. Um, we need uh, really a substitute for the volume information because uh, there is now a centrally located Forex, Forex exchange that can give us uh, really reliable uh, volume information. So instead, we will uh, work with a range-weighted average price calculation. And uh, uh, that is basically telling us that uh, volatility is uh, roughly proportional to the square root of uh, volume. So by calculating a uh, weighted average, uh, we will use the squared ranges as a weighting factor. Uh, to mirror the volume weighted average. And we've done some extensive uh, tests of this concept and found that it comes really very close to the, uh, to the VWAP uh, calculation. And so uh, this is what we will use for the Forex uh, strategy here today. Uh, so just like the VWAP, the RWAP, the range weighted average price, is anchored at the start of the period for which uh, the transactions are being recorded. So we can anchor uh, for any standard period, uh, such as here, we have a, a trading day, but we can also uh, look at a trading week or a trading month. And we also have a, a rolling uh, RBAP calculation that allows you to, uh, to work with a uh, moving average or a moving time window for calculating uh, the ranges over the last uh, three or five or 10 days, what, what, whatever you, you like. So as a day trader, I think uh, the most important uh, indicator of the uh, RVAP family is the daily calculation. Uh, like I mentioned, this is a daily chart and we see the uh, uh, 6E contract uh, in a 15 minute chart here. And uh, the calculation starts with the first transaction of the trading day and it will end with the last transaction prior to close. So during the day, you see here the RVAP gradually stabilizes, and the more it stabilizes, the more significant it becomes as a 
benchmark and uh, the more useful it will be for us as a technical trading tool. So what we'll do here is to use the um, first standard deviation bands to uh, represent a value area. This is statistically where 70% of all transactions during a day will take place. And so this is uh, the area where we're likely to catch uh, new trends early on. So if we're in an uptrend, we will look to buy when the price is retracing back down to the value area, really taking advantage of uh, prices that are close to the uh, daily average. So as for the pivots, uh, that's uh, the other leading benchmark uh, that we'll use for our strategy here today. Many of you are, of course, familiar with uh, the pivot point calculation, but uh, today I'm uh, talking about the concept which is uh, perhaps less known. It's uh, the Jackson zones. Uh, they're not named after the uh, President Jackson that we see here on the $20 bill, but uh, after John Jackson, who was uh, one of the first to use them. So they're very much like uh, traditional pivots. Uh, the calculation is, uh, is the same. We're working with a range of yesterday's price action to produce the main pivot point. And uh, we do that by um, adding the high and the low and the close, dividing by three. Uh, but uh, uh, the difference uh, with the Jackson zones and uh, the regular pivot uh, calculation is really the first support and resistance levels. Uh, with uh, Jackson zones, uh, they are in symmetrical uh, distance from uh, the pivot, uh, which is not the case uh, from uh, in the traditional pivot point calculation. So we have uh, two support uh, levels below and two resistance levels above. And uh, the, the second levels, they are uh, representing the entire range, the entire price, price range of, uh, of yesterday's uh, price action. So the difference between uh, high and low, and then you put that range on top of the pivot and then you have the uh, second uh, support and resistance levels. And then <clears throat> we have also added additional bands here. The blue bands that you see uh, are based on the Fibonacci numbers uh, derived from the golden ratio. So here we have uh, the 61.8 range and the uh, 1.38 uh, ranges uh, on top of these uh, first and second uh, resistance levels. So this is important uh, because uh, it's relatively rare that the price uh, moves beyond these levels. So they have a really long tradition and uh, are widespread in the forex community. And uh, they've definitely turned into this uh, self-fulfilling prophecy that we're talking about here. So uh, because so many are looking and paid, paying attention to these levels, we're highly likely to see a reaction uh, when the market uh, interacts uh, with these, uh, these levels. And so as a general rule, you want to uh, buy support and uh, sell resistance uh, at these levels. And uh, that's to avoid this, uh, exactly this type of situation, which is uh, what usually happens to uh, newbies and rookie traders. Uh, resistance is, uh, is really where sellers are looking to cash in their profits and uh, they will often overwhelm the buyers and causing a price imbalance uh, which will cause the the prices to retrace so uh, support on the other hand is uh, where we'll have bargain hunters uh, jumping in and uh, overwhelming the sellers uh, causing a imbalance to the other side and causing the prices to uh, to go up so knowing this uh, you really only want to uh, buy support and sell resistance. And so what we'll do here in the trading strategy, we'll uh, filter the trades by saying that uh, if uh, the price moves within a certain distance uh, of the landmark resistance, uh, such as uh, the pivot, then we'll only take shorts. And uh, if we're going straight into a support level, uh, we'll only want to take uh, long signals. So that's an important uh, way of, uh, of filtering, filtering the signals. And uh, that's what we see here. Uh, we want to check uh, the, that we're not trading into a, a pivot uh, support and resistance level. So for example, here, the uh, pivot is a support uh, because the price is uh, trading above it. And you don't want to go short headed straight into this area because we're very likely to see a pullback uh, following a test of this level. So 
having established that this is a long scenario, we also want to pay attention to other landmark resistance uh, levels, uh, such as uh, yesterday's uh, close and uh, and uh, and high here. Um, having broken these levels, uh, we then first uh, we, see, we face the the first uh, resistance level, and um, you should probably wait until you. Uh, get beyond uh, or uh, above this level before you go long. So uh, this is a, a place where we would uh, enter here in the uh, cash session above uh, the first uh, resistance level and then take the exit uh, towards the second resistance level. So uh, these levels really work as uh, price reference points because uh, uh, many traders uh, have their uh, stop loss and uh, profit targets uh, just around them, uh, around these levels. And uh, that's why we'll also see uh, price reactions, these pullbacks and uh, retracements that I mentioned. And uh, that's uh, really the, the, the market uh, acting in a coordinated way because the traders know what to do and, uh, and uh, when, when, the, when the prices reach these levels. So. Uh, definitely pay attention to uh, to where these levels are are located and uh, we want to pay attention to them because that's uh, a way to really uh, find out the risk reward ratio of our trade before we get into the trade so we check the distance from these landmark support and resistance levels and compare the distance to our stop loss and that's the risk reward ratio of our trade. So potential gain should, of course, always exceed risk. And uh, at a minimum, it should be uh, one to two, but preferably more like one to three or one to four. And um, so you check the distance uh, from uh, your entry to uh, the landmark uh, uh, support and resistance levels produced by the pivots. And uh, then you compare that with uh, your stop loss for the trade. and. Uh, uh, then we get the risk reward ratio based on that. And uh, to help us with uh, this calculation, uh, we uh, have uh, a, the zero lag oscillator uh, that will um, uh, help us find the entry signals. And uh, that's what you see towards the, the bottom of the chart here. That's the zero lag. It has uh, three main uh, components, a, a trend filter, uh, the histogram, and the price action signal. So the trend filter is uh, pretty easy. It's uh, the zero line that you see down here. If this is green, then we're looking for long signals. And if the line is red, uh, we're in short motors. So this is a three minute uh, chart of the uh, Euro futures contract, the 6E. And uh, what we're looking for are uh, retracement signals here. And, uh, these are the uh, uh, type of setups that will really allow us to work with tight stops and uh, cash in uh, on uh, high rewards uh, when we write about uh, entry timing. So the idea is to step into a market when a young trend is just about to establish itself and uh, <clears throat> make sure that we don't get into something that is, uh, is over the hill, so to speak. Uh, we really want to uh, participate in the main chunk uh, of, of the trend. So if we're in an uptrend like we see here, we look for a retracement when there is a short-term oversold. And uh, the histogram <clears throat> will then start uh, plotting these uh, white bars that you see here. And uh, we'll then know that there is a pullback into the trend and uh, that we have a uh, setup, trade setup coming up. And uh, so after we see uh, these uh, white bars in the histogram, the zero lag oscillator is uh, looking for a um, sign that buyers are taking advantage of these lower prices uh, and that the trend is continuing towards the, uh, the upside. And uh, we'll then look for a up trust bar, which is a bar with a close above the previous high, or uh, we can also have a histogram bar, which is uh, higher than the previous one. And if we have either of those conditions, the zero lag will uh, plot a lime green confirmation bar and uh, we'll then enter long at the close of this bar and uh, set a stop below the signal bar or the prior bar to the signal bar whichever is uh, lowest 
So if uh, we're right about uh, the trade, we can also <clears throat> add to the uh, position, uh, adding the pyramid signals, uh, which is what we see here. Again, uh, it's uh, buying into a retracement uh, of the main trend and then setting a stop for the entire position below the new entry, uh, sort of scaling into the, the trade here. And as you see, uh, we almost uh, hit our stop here, but uh, our VAT band is really holding as support and uh, a good place to exit this trade would have been uh, uh, up here towards the second standard deviation of uh, today's uh, RVAP. And uh, this is also coinciding <clears throat> with the uh, RVAP band of uh, yesterday. So uh, this is uh, a very logical uh, exit point because there will be very few um, transactions taking place uh, above the second standard deviation. And uh, this is also uh, where the uh, range weighted average price of yesterday uh, was located. So an area of uh, fairly, fairly strong resistance. And as you can see also the market is consolidating uh, around this, uh, this level. <clears throat> so uh, the uh, zero lag oscillator is also uh, detecting if there is no renewed buying into a uh, retracement. So if there is no renewed buying pressure after uh, three setup bars, uh, then we'll see these gray bars uh, that you see here. Then there was no buyers really taking advantage of the lower prices. And uh, this turns uh, a lot of times out to be a weakness of the bulls and uh, could uh, indicate a, a trend change. And uh, in this case, uh, invalidates the uh, the setup. Uh, a long setup would also be invalidated if uh, the histogram turns to red. So if uh, we go from green to uh, red bars, then there is also uh, no trade setup, even uh, if we are uh, in a retracement into an uptrend. So, um, if you're wondering also about the green uh, race, racing stripes here, they are plotted by an indicator add-on that's called Bloodhound. And that's what I'm using here to uh, create the strategy. I'll uh, talk briefly uh, about later on here how uh, you can integrate uh, Bloodhound to uh, combine different uh, uh, inputs from different indicators into a trading strategy. It's a very, very useful tool. So let's continue now to the uh, short end of things here. We have uh, a uh, trend that is uh, uh, to the downside. And we see that here in price as well as uh, the zero line here is uh, is red. So uh, it's, it's basically blocking all long signals, just looking for short setups. And we'll have a retracement uh, set up when uh, there's a short-term overbought in the downtrend. So a setup signal will then be uh, signaled by these yellow bars that you see here. Uh, they're telling us that there is a pullback into the trend. So after the first yellow bar has plotted on the chart, the uh, zero lag uh, then looks for a price action signal. And in this case, we will look for a, uh, a down thrust bar. So it's a low uh, below the previous, uh, it's a close below the previous low or a histogram bar, which is lower than uh, the previous one. So if you have either of these, then uh, the histogram will uh, plot in bright red and we can enter short at the close of this bar. And uh, we'll then also set a uh, stop above the high of the prior bar or the signal bar, whichever is, uh, is higher. Again, there has to be a uh, confirmation bar within uh, three bars. I mentioned that earlier. And uh, if there's three setups, uh, th three setup bars uh, after one another and no renewed selling, then uh, the uh, setup will be invalidated. This is, by the way, a filter that can be turned off. So if you want to take signals, after the gray bars show up, then you can uh, still generate uh, signals if you choose to. And there is also a threshold filter integrated in the zero lag oscillator, which will be uh, preventing us uh, from getting into a trade when the market is uh, oversold or uh, when the uh, trend is uh, exhausted.
So uh, those are basically the additional filters uh, that you have in the uh, in the Serialag oscillator. There's a couple of additional filters as well, but that will maybe be a little bit too much for for this presentation. So um, okay, so let's take a closer look at uh, uh, this last uh, trade that we uh, we uh, had to the downside here. Uh, we want to check the distance from our uh, stop loss uh, and uh, uh, the entry point uh, was uh, here. So we have a uh, combined risk of uh, about 15 ticks. And then we really see the, uh, the first landmark uh, um, support is here uh, just 15 ticks away. So this is really a one-to-one uh, -one risk uh, reward ratio, not really uh, something that is, uh, is what we're looking for. And uh, as you see here, the uh, market eventually moved uh, all the way into the 11.50 and 11.30 area, but uh, you don't really want to uh, have a situation where you're just sitting around hoping uh, the trade to uh, that the trade will go your way. So in this case, it took about uh, uh, three hours here uh, for this uh, to move out of this uh, uh, first support level consolidation. So another support. Uh, uh, level that we see here is the uh, created by the the rolling pivot. That is a uh, combined um, calculation of the pivot levels for the last uh, three days. And uh, as you see here, this is also a strong support level for this trade. And uh, it's really important to be aware of these uh, levels uh, when you're choosing uh, which trades to take and. Uh, which ones to pass on, because these are really roadblocks that uh, are likely to create uh, consolidation and, uh, and pullbacks. Uh, so make sure that you, you're not trading straight into something like this. That will definitely reduce your chances of uh, success uh, quite significantly. So let's look at the uh, overview of the uh, strategy here today. We uh, uh, summarize by looking here at uh, the daily range was uh, created by uh, the range weighted average price. We want the price to be in the value, so uh, within one standard deviation of the uh, range weighted average price band. And then uh, we use uh, the zero lag oscillator really to uh, time our entry signals and uh, to find uh, what our risk reward is going to be uh, on on the trade by measuring the distance from any uh, uh, landmark support and resistance levels, such as the uh, uh, the pivot and also uh, previous uh, range rated average price levels. So as for a uh, back test here, we have, um, uh, like I mentioned, uh, done a back test on the 6E. Euro futures contract uh, variation of this concept uh, also works with other instruments. I've done previous uh, presentations uh, on the e uh, Time window here is uh, is one year, and uh, have about uh, 420 trades here on one contract. Is a net profit of uh, 6,800 bucks, and we need to subtract for uh, slippage and commissions here. Uh, I have not. Uh, included uh, those costs in here as uh, the um, stop loss and profit targets are set differently in the back test than uh, I would do in a, in a real trading scenario. So the reason for that is uh, that we want to work with uh, a fairly robust back test. So I'm, I'm using here uh, just a, uh, a hard stop loss and profit target setting. So we have here the uh, uh, average true range period of uh, the last 50 bars, and uh, we set the profit targets at uh, at four and the stop loss at, uh, at two, and uh, that's really to make it easier to uh, to test the validity of this uh, concept and uh, just uh, find straight across the board uh, whether uh, this is um, uh, a, a profitable and a viable uh, concept. So. 
uh, we've also have uh, a time filter added to this so I'm trading this uh, in the morning uh, European time 7 uh, 7 30 in the morning until uh, 12 uh, 12 30 in the afternoon uh, so this is also important for um, setting up uh, certain uh, pivots and uh, we have uh, also our uh, session template handbook to uh, to explain you in detail uh, how to do that and um, the performance curve uh, is uh, fairly consistent and, uh, and stable uh, this uh, does work for the uh, current market regime so the uh, European Central Bank is currently easing and will continue to do so until uh, sometimes uh, next year in 2016 so um, I can tell you that this uh, type of concept did not work when the US Federal Bank was easing so uh, it's important to be uh, aware that this is a, uh, a very very much a single uh, issue instrument so it's a, um, uh, a currency which is very exposed to political uh, decisions uh, so that's also the case for uh, bonds and commodities and single stocks of course they will um, be exposed to a, a single news story or news factor that can uh, control the uh, entire order flow. So a change in monetary policy will uh, uh, create a different probability play on, on this setup. Index futures are of course uh, very different because uh, <clears throat> they are multi-item markets. So you have uh, many individual stocks responding differently to a number of news stories. Uh, so good news for all companies will be bad news for transportation companies and uh, good news for defense will be bad for for the travel industry, etc. So um, that means that uh, although the market may be up on one particular news story, there will be stocks within the index that uh, either ignore it or have a sell-off reaction. So uh, that's, that's just very different from uh, from currencies and from bonds and uh, commodities because, as I mentioned, a single news story can really uh, control the entire order flow and, uh, and change the, uh, the probability uh, of the setup. So keep that in mind. Um, but all in all, uh, like I mentioned, this uh, setup has, um, has not been optimized. I think there is uh, still uh, room for improvement here with uh, tighter stops and uh, pyramiding signals and, and using trailing stops that I uh, showed briefly earlier here. And uh, that's not accounted for in, uh, in this backtest. So keep that in mind. So for those of you who are not familiar with the uh, Bloodhound add-on to Trader, uh, this is uh, the way I created the, uh, the strategy. It's a, a visual programming tool, making it really easy to uh, uh, create and test trading strategies in NinaTrader. So um, if you have Blood on, you can use this uh, template, strategy template that are created here together with the, with the Illicit Trader indicators one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And uh, yeah, what you see here are all the conditions uh, that I've used in this setup. So uh, the parameters defining the strategy itself. So we have uh, one here, which is the... Uh, uh, price in the first standard deviation of the range weighted average price and then we have the uh, zero lag retracements and uh, pyramiding signals and we also have the Jackson zone um, headwind support and resistance levels as well as the RVAP headwind resistance levels and support levels and uh, finally the time session solver which uh, is uh, defining for us in which times we're going to uh, trade the setup so i think you probably have a pretty good idea to why it makes sense to work with these concepts by now uh, a lot of people out there are looking for the latest uh, holy grail or secret indicator or something to give them an edge but uh, that's not really what technical trading is all about. You want to have uh, these uh, objective price levels that really have uh, widespread use because uh, that's where uh, institutional traders uh, will have their price reference points and uh, 
we'll then have a better idea of uh, what the market will will do next. And uh, next, I think we can uh, look at some uh, trade setups uh, that I uh, had this week, and we'll also have a look at uh, <clears throat> blood on perhaps. So let's see if I can get out of this uh, presentation. Here we go. Okay, so this is uh, <clears throat> Monday last week. We had uh, a uh, stop loss right off the bat. That's uh, really what's uh, uh, quite nice with this uh, setup. You know, very usually very early on, if you're uh, if you're wrong about uh, a, a trade, then uh, you will uh, you will find out fairly quickly. So uh, this is the signal bar right here. And then a stop loss was, um, let's see here, if you can just add that. Uh, it looks like we need to actually mark it up here. So the stop loss would be just below here. And uh, in this case, we had a, a marginal loss within, uh, within uh, 10 minutes. So you find out you were uh, wrong about the setup and uh, you move on to the next uh, next uh, opportunity which uh, presented itself over here to the short side so an entry at the close of the bar here and a stop loss above the previous um, the previous high and uh, then we can see here uh, we had a, a risk reward ratio. Let's uh, pull up a little box here. We can measure this and by adding them on top of one another, we can fairly easily find what the risk reward ratio was. This is a little bit less than I, I wanted to uh, when we're going into yesterday's uh, range weighted average price. And then we can have a look at uh, how this looked in the uh, uh, pivot chart. I always have pay close attention to the pivots before I enter a trade. And as you can see here, this was also not a, uh, a very attractive setup because we have a distance of uh, more or less a one-to-one -one distance to the uh, central pivot line here. So um, this was a, a trade to to pass on. OK, and then we have here on uh, the following day, on uh, Tuesday, we had a uh, uh, entry at the close of this bar. Let's pull this back in. So this was a very minor risk on this, a couple of ticks. And as you see here, the distance here and all the way down to the uh, three day, the range weighted average price of three days ago uh, was, uh, was quite, quite far away. So we had a, uh, entry here and then pretty much a retracement into the um, into our uh, entry entry price and then a pyramiding signal uh, into the uh, three day the range weighted average price of three days ago so i did not take the pyramiding signal here as uh, the close here really had uh, had moved quite far before um, so this this would this would have been the entry and this would have been an, the the new stop and uh, that's uh, a bar that has moved uh, too far uh, into this uh, key uh, support level uh, for this to be a, a interesting entry so I just in this case stuck with the uh, with one uh, one contract and uh, the, if we look at this in the in the pivot chart, you can see here that it was also uh, close to the three-day rolling pivot. 
uh, and uh, also the central pivot it was didn't really reach a uh, one to two ratio so um, you also see that we had just broken uh, the price was moving above up here and uh, this was a uh, support level at that point and uh, we've broken as we break this point the market just kind of falls together does a little retest of the level up here and then we have this second uh, big move going into the three-day uh, pivot level and then uh, down here to the to the central pivot of the day where it it stopped at the at the uh, end of the European session here all right any more trades that we can look at here we have here um, a typical non-starter we're just between uh, the uh, three-day pivot and the regular pivot. We don't really get to a uh, one to two ratio at all on this one. Uh, not on this one either, really. We have a first support right underneath uh, the pivot, the three-day pivot. All of this eventually does move in the right direction. Uh, here we're stopped out, and this is uh, jigsawing. And yeah, this one here we have a, a, a fat tail. Uh, this is really important and uh, also really why I, I mentioned uh, this earlier that uh, one news story can can change the order flow. This here is the, uh, I think it's the, uh, yeah, this is 2.30 European time. So that would be the unemployment data. So, um, that's uh, affecting the uh, euro currency, uh, the U.S. Uh, employment data. So this is uh, pointing towards a, a weaker dollar and uh, a stronger euro. And uh, yeah, you can uh, talk about uh, technical trading uh, all day long, but uh, as you see here, this is a, a news release that just completely changes. Uh, the order flow of the entire day and uh, there is no uh, uh, no really way of foreseeing this so uh, good to be aware of uh, of these news releases that can really affect the 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 entire market here and uh, you don't want to trade into uh, to those so make uh, make sure that you you're aware of uh, when those uh, news releases are coming up and uh, that you avoid uh, being invested in the market at uh, those points because, um, yeah, that's uh, that's not what technical trading is about. So, all right. So um, I think I'm going to go back to the uh, presentation here now, and I'm uh, going to tell you about the uh, special offer that I mentioned uh, earlier. So we do have uh, a uh, special for you here today, and it's. Uh, um, on one hand, you can uh, have a systematic uh, approach to trading, like uh, uh, that's what I do. I like to uh, know the statistical probabilities of the setups that I'm trading. So I'm, I'm really testing all the setups uh, that I'm, um, I'm using to make sure that I have uh, statistically some some type of edge. Uh, but you can also use this uh, uh, for a discretionary setup, in which case you you would. Uh, uh, be interested in the uh, session VVAP package, which also contains the uh, range-weighted average price, as I mentioned here today, and the uh, the zero lag oscillator. Uh, normally, uh, this has a, a total value of uh, 458, but today we'll feature this at uh, 345. So uh, that's a discount of about 20 25 percent off the normal price, and uh, you can use this really to find uh, entries within the first uh, standard deviation bands of the uh, VVAP or the RVAP. And uh, then you use the uh, zero lag oscillator to, to time your entries uh, like I showed you uh, here today and really to keep those stops fairly tight. So, And then you can take the exits towards the second standard deviation or uh, towards the uh, landmark price uh, and uh, support and resistance levels marked by the previous uh, uh, VVAP and, uh, and RMAP bands. 
uh, or you can uh, go with the uh, uh, leading indicator package here, uh, plus Bloodhound, uh, which is uh, pretty much everything that the way that I covered it here today. We have um, uh, all the indicators, so you have the uh, session pivots, the uh, VVAPs, the zero lag, and the Bloodhound, so that you can uh, start using this uh, trading setup uh, right away. You import the strategy and uh, and pretty much off you go. In addition, uh, <clears throat> with this package, you get uh, two special bonuses. We have the um, session template handbook, which is uh, what I mentioned briefly earlier. Uh, it's very useful if you're working with session indicators uh, and uh, you want to be uh, able to isolate specific trading um, sessions where institutional traders are active. And uh, this is very useful for the uh, pivot indicator because, uh, uh, well, for some of the the um, markets, there will be a, a local bias. That's not really the case for Forex. Forex is really a, a global market, but uh, for some of the index futures or um, certain commodities, there will be a local bias where institutional traders are active uh, during specific hours. And so you want to really focus and isolate uh, the price action in that time window and that's uh, what the session template uh, handbook can can help you help you with and of course uh, as i mentioned we are throwing in the uh, strategy template that i'm i've talked about here today uh, so you can get uh, get started on this right away uh, total value of uh, all of these uh, uh, features is uh, just shy of 1400 bucks and uh, the special offer here today is only 895 so that's uh, yeah about 35 percent off uh, the normal price and uh, so basically if you think about it uh, you, you you get blood on almost for free with this uh, uh, if you if you get in on this uh, the special package deal here um, so in the session VVAP package, you have the uh, the daily VVAPs, you have the weekly and the monthly, and uh, that's really important to uh, to find where the higher time frame traders are are going to enter their trades. And uh, like I mentioned, we also have a rolling VVAP, and we have the TVAPs uh, as well in this package. For pivots, it's pretty much the same. We have daily, weekly monthly and uh, rolling pivots in addition to the Jackson zones that I've showed you here today. Uh, the zero lag has uh, three components to it. It has the trend filter, it has the histogram with the setup signals, and then uh, we have the price action signals uh, baked in there as well. Bloodhound, I've already talked a little bit about that. I'm not going to go further into detail on that. Um, other than saying it's a great product, it's really helped me to uh, uh, yeah, work visually uh, programming trading strategies. So that makes it uh, a lot quicker and easier to test whether you're off to, uh, if you're on the, on, the, on the wrong or the right track uh, in, a, in a trading strategy, it's very fast and easy to work with. Does require a learning curve, uh, no doubt about it, but uh, in the end, it's uh, definitely saving me time in, uh, in testing and developing uh, trading strategies. And uh, yeah, the handbook and strategy template, I just uh, went over that. And um, yeah, another thing that's uh, neat about Bloodhound is that they uh, really have a, a great support team and uh, weekly uh, workshop classes to to help you get going on that uh, that learning curve for that uh, that software. So um, the another thing that's also really good about the the Bloodhound working with Bloodhound is that you can set alerts. So you can get uh, an email when there is a trading setting trading setup coming up, and um, you don't really have to be to sit glued in front of your PC all day. Uh, that way you can uh, just have Bloodhound alert you to uh, interesting setup uh, setups that are occurring. So uh, if this is something that you're interested in, you probably don't want to uh, wait for this deal to, uh, to get uh, 
any better. And then the trader eight is just around the corner and uh, we'll need to update all of our indicators uh, for that uh, new version. And uh, that means that we'll have to uh, factor in some costs that are associated with the Ninja Trader 8 upgrade. So our prices are likely to go up uh, some 20 or 30 percent in uh, a few weeks. Uh, if, however, you decide to buy now before the uh, release of Ninja Trader 8, then you have a free upgrade for Ninja Trader 8. So that's an added bonus uh, for you today. So I guess you just need to figure out if you want. Uh, 20 or 30 percent pri uh, higher prices in a few weeks or 30 to 40 uh, percent discount uh, today so uh, i can guarantee you uh, the deal will not get uh, any better than it is uh, here today and uh yeah like i said uh, if you uh, just want to take a discretionary approach to this uh, there is also the uh, uh, session vvap and zero uh, lag bundle for a total of only 395 and you go to listertrader.com slash ninja dash webinar to uh to lock in this offer and uh, uh we have a little uh, order button there as you see and you uh you pay through paypal so i think that's uh pretty much uh it for me today i'm uh going to take uh, a couple of questions here now see that we're also Coming up on uh, uh, towards the the end of our time limit here today, so um, I see there is a couple of you that have written in the questions as well. So uh, there is a question here on how many licenses for uh, each purchase. So okay, so there's two licenses, so you can put this on on two machines for one license. So if you if you get here, for example, the session VVAPs and zero lag oscillator for 345, you can put that, for example, on your laptop and on your home trading computer. And uh, if you want to have additional licenses beyond that, we also have pr uh, special prices for customers that add uh, a third or a fourth uh, license. And um, there's another question here. If this is a yearly subscription, no, this is a a one-time um, purchase, so um, yeah, that's a uh, three forty-five or uh, for the the session VVAPs and the zero lag oscillator, uh, or the uh, eight ninety-five for the uh, leading indicator package with the session pivots and uh, Bloodhound added uh, in addition to the. Uh, session template handbook and the strategy template. OK, so I think that's uh, about it of what I had uh, time for here today. Uh, like I mentioned, I will get back to uh, all of you via email. So uh, I look forward to, uh, to that and uh, to staying in touch with you, hopefully welcoming you as a uh, lizard trader very soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I uh, appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to hearing from you. Thanks, and uh, have a good day, and bye-bye.